I'm standing here on a pile of cinders that came from a cinder pit eight miles up the road. Um, there's a book you might want to check out. It's called A Pattern Language. I think Jeff mentioned it in the class. But they talk about different lightweight types of concrete and materials you can mix with concrete. We had this cinder locally available. Um, really the only thing they use cinder for in this country is generally they put on the roads the smaller grade of it um, when it snows instead of salt. This, um, it's very light. It's got thousands of little air pockets in it. And so what we did in the permaculture retrofit of our home is we mix this with concrete on about a 10 part cinder to one part concrete mix and poured uh, foot thick walls. The advantage of using this local available natural material is you get to pour very thick walls cheaply. I don't have $800 worth of cinder um, in about 2,000 square feet of addition. And because of the air pockets, it's really well insulated. You don't have to use any insulation. You don't have to use any exterior siding. And you don't have to use any interior siding. You can just stuck with it. It's a very low-tech solution. We uh, poured the concrete walls using plywood forms and pipe clamps and rebar. This is part of the permaculture retrofit redesign of the old farmhouse. Uh, the old farmhouse was 2 by 4 construction. It was built over an old barn. It had almost zero insulation. But it had very good aspect. I'm facing due south. So this property catches the southern sun in the winter all day long. And uh, so what we did here was very simple. We built a, uh, a greenhouse on the entire length of the property. It came out 12 feet. So we came out with six feet of additional roofing and six feet of triple wall polycarbonate. And then the very front of the greenhouse is done with six just standard double pane sliding glass doors with no UV protection. We want to get as much light in for plant growth as we can. But let's take you inside and show you how this is going to work. Um, here we are in early October and we're uh, very late afternoon about 6, 6 p.m. And you can see that the southern sun is about halfway. Uh, so six feet inside the, the sunroom. Uh, if you just go back a month ago, the sun was just barely uh, on the other side of this glass. Uh, by mid-December, or by mid-November, the sun will be about halfway up this wall. This wall right here was the old exterior of the old barn farmhouse. 2x4 insulation and uh, not great construction. So what we did here is, this is a thermal wall. This is going to pick up the heat from the low southern sun. And this is 18 inch thick concrete and rock. Another great feature of this thermal wall, this 18 inch thick concrete and rock wall, is during the summer uh, when the sun is up high overhead, this actually keeps the house cool. Uh, in Arizona, up in the high country, we get a huge swing between day and night temperatures, often 30, sometimes 40 degrees. So even in the summer when it's 85, 90, uh, at night you can open up the sliders. This thermal mass will get cool and keep the house cool during the day. Another uh, interesting feature of our sunroom is uh, when we decided to pour this thermal wall, I happened to have some Schedule 40 PVC pipe on the farm. And so basically this red um, opening that you see is 8 inch PVC pipe. The pipe elbows down inside the wall, it elbows there, and then comes all the way to the other end and terminates. And so then that piece of pipe, we drilled holes and ran uh, black sewer pipe from the PVC pipe all the way up every 18 inches to the top of this wall. Um, on top of this wall here, the, that black PVC pipe that's sticking up to the concrete is hooded with ductwork 
and it runs into our small propane furnace. So we will have the ability in the cold of winter, and it gets very cold here below zero, to just turn on the fan to our furnace without burning any propane and pulling warm moist air from the greenhouse and heating the whole rest of the house. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wall and uh, we can take a look at the ductwork. Uh, this should give you an idea of how thick this wall is. Like I said, it's 18 inches of concrete and rock. Above this wall, we have the ductwork, which the ductwork is hidden in the drywall over to this closet over here where the small propane furnace will be. So we will have the ability to turn on the fan and then heat the rest of the house with warm, moist air from the greenhouse. A secondary feature we did with this thermal wall is we did run some copper pipe that sneak through. And what we're going to do here is put a little radiator on the back of the wood stove. So when it gets cloudy for a long time or cold, if we're worried about losing any plants, we shouldn't. But we should be able to fire up the wood stove, heat the thermal mass, and keep our uh, sunroom nice and warm during long periods of cloudiness or snow. One of the nice features of building with this locally available uh, cinder, volcanic cinder or lava, is um, you can very inexpensively build beautiful um, architecture. I mean, you just don't get thick walls like this where you can set in doors and windows. Uh, this structure should be around several hundred years. I mean, once it is stuccoed, um, it is solid, it is insulated, it is, it is uh, soundproof, it's beautiful. Um, we really like it. Uh, you're helping the local economy because you're using materials that are local available. Uh, you're not buying imported lumber and insulation and drywall. So you're really sourcing uh, all those materials local. Yes, it takes more labor, but that money is, is cycling to uh, people in the local community. So I think it's fantastic. You're never going to see volcanic pumice or lava at Home Depot because there wouldn't be much money in it uh, for the big chains. Now, the rest of the house really was just cheap 2x4 construction and uh, very cheap vinyl siding. This here is another innovation I'm pretty excited about. Uh, if you can see in there, there is the siding for the old barn. It was covered with a cheap vinyl siding and no insulation. So how we got the rest of the old house to match with the new lava crete part that we poured is uh, we discovered a product that is made uh, about eight hours from us where it's a magnesium based stucco. It doesn't have Portland. Apparently the ancient Romans built with magnesium base concrete, the magnesium does not attract water the way Portland does. And so what we were able to do here is put three inches of foam on top of the wood and then apply this uh, magnesium based concrete or stucco right over the top and it makes it as hard as a rock. It's stuccoed like the rest of the lava crete and uh, added a huge amount of insulation value to the rest of the house. This is another um, innovation I'm excited that we did in our permaculture redesign of the old barn farmhouse. This roof, you'll see here, it looks like there's about four inches of concrete on the top of the roof. This is actually a mix of six parts perlite uh, to one part Portland cement and then poured up here uh, just by buckets. Took a day and a crew of about four of us to get this done. Once this hardened up, we then stuccoed it and covered it with that magnesium-based stucco mat, uh, max product and nylon mesh. This should not expand and contract because the perlite is it's almost like styrofoam pellets. But it's lightweight, makes a great roof, should be here for 100 years, and uh, adds four extra inches of insulation to the top of the house. Um, if you look at my feet, I uh, decided to use this same magnesium based cement product for my roof. Um, this hasn't been done much in the U.S., but what we're standing on is two inches of foam with nylon mesh and then stuccoed right over the top.
This has been fantastic because it keeps the home cool in the summer and warm in the winter. Just want to take a moment to thank uh, Jeff Lawton and the whole team. I'm sure there was a huge team of individuals to put that course together. Uh, I have been reading about, studying about permaculture for 25 years and uh, picked up so many new ideas and fresh ideas in the course. Um, looking forward to getting uh, the opportunity to put a lot more of these ideas together and design plans for uh, people in this local area. Thank you very much.